Hello and welcome back to Crazy Casey Con Technology Channel. In this week's episode, it's a bit of a crazy project, and I have a s script because it's a bit complex. And this just shows that it's a proof of concept using cheap parts, and if they work, we can make a future video of better parts. Because my computer is a slim all in one computer. I am unable to upgrade it graphically with a new GPU, or am I? Thanks to Boom and Crypto Mining, a solution was developed and is now cheaply available except for an external GPU, and that is how this project starts. The first thing we need is a GPU. This here is a GTX 560. It is 10 years old but it only cost us £20 on eBay, making it ideal to experiment with. If something goes wrong and we kill the card, it will be no big loss. Using the website user benchmark, it confirms that it is better than the onboard graphically processing that the Intel Core i7 has. The second thing we need is power. As it will only be powering the graphics card, it doesn't need to be that powerful. Another £20 on eBay got us a Corsair 450. While this may seem excessive for our little GTX 560, it does mean we can upgrade the GPU without too much worry of power supply issues. Finally, we need to connect the GPU to the computer. In the first episode of Crazy Case Corner, I identified that I had a free mini PCIe socket. This adapter is a mini PCIe connector to PCIe socket, which allows the running of an external GPU. This cost us a whopping £4.50 on eBay. However, the drawback to the setup is that not being directly connected to the motherboard means there is a drop in performance. While this one uses USB, others use HDMI and Thunderbolt, which will be more efficient. Again, this could be upgraded later if needed. So let's start setting it up. One of the first obstacles is figuring how to wire it up. If the mini PCI is here, How do we get the wire out? Well, on the opposite side is the location of where an optical drive would go. This was an optional extra and wasn't installed in my computer. If we remove the blanking plate, then the wire should easily exit the casing. So let's open it up then. So here is a mini PCIe port. And as you can see, this should be fairly easy to reroute the wire to where the optical drive should be. But for the time being, we will finish this project by leaving the back panel off. This means if there are any issues, we can get to it quickly without having to dismantle the stand and casing. So the first thing we need to do is install a mini PCIe. This goes in similar to the SSD we installed previously. It goes in at an angle and then is held in with a small bolt. And that's it. Now let's install the GPU, making sure the clip's all the way out. You may want to swap hands. Install the And then pop the clip in and then it's done. This adapter has one six pin connector and the graphics card has two. And the ad adapter came with this which is a six pin to SATA. If we look at our PSU we already have plenty of six pins and SATAs and I have already wrapped up the wires that we don't need to use.
There is one point to note, the PSU has a wire that grounds through the motherboard so that it only turns on when the motherboard is attached. As this PSU is not connected to a motherboard, it will not power up. This is easily fixed by finding the 24 pin motherboard connector. Within this connector is a single green wire. This is the wire that needs to be grounded. This is simply done by inserting a small length of wire from the green to either of the black wires beside it. Now that has been sorted, we just need to plug it all in. Now to turn everything back on. It may take some time, but Windows will still detect and try to install drivers for the GPU. However, we can also visit the official NVIDIA website and download the most up-to-date drivers, as well as the additional software to go with it. We've downloaded and installed the driver and done a restart. Now to change a couple of settings. Right-click, NVIDIA Control Panel. Oops, there's an error, but this is easily fixed. From our research, it appears that some setups allow the GPU to pass the display back through to the original monitor, but some don't. We currently don't know if this is GPU related or if it is down to our PCIe adapter using USB, but this is something we can look into later. For the moment, the way around this is to have the GPU output to its own screen. And we just so happen to have a second screen that we can use. Any excuse for an upgrade. Let's try again. Right click, go to the NVIDIA control panel. And it worked. So I'll change that to the graphics card. Then apply. Done. Now to see if this has worked, we can run the user benchmark test to see if it is recognised.
after each upgrade we have ran and recorded these tests, a later video will review these. For the moment these percentages won't mean anything, but if we scroll down we can see our CPU. This means our test worked and we can start thinking about upgrades. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, please like, comment and subscribe, bye guys.